Shincheonji Online Seminar Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation God's New Covenant Testifying about Revelation to the Whole World August and September 2021 The First and Second Shincheonji Online Seminar A total of 30,372 participants from 12 places Approximately 1,800 pastors in attendance The words of Revelation are revealed finally in 2,000 years. The chairman and the 12 tribe leaders of Shincheonji Church of Jesus are making known the secrets of the Kingdom of Heaven. From October 18th to December 27th, every Monday and Thursday, Shincheonji Online Seminar is broadcasted worldwide simultaneously. We invite everyone to testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation God's New Covenant. God's precious people all over the world, whose hope is in heaven, it is nice to meet you. I am Yu Cheuk from Peter Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. Thank you very much for joining us at Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant, Out of Your Heart of Loving the Revealed Word of God. I give thanks and glory to our God who allowed all of this to take place. And I wish that everyone who is attending this seminar from various places around the globe will be filled with God's grace and love. Before we begin the seminar, we'll gather our hearts together and offer up a prayer to God first. Our God, the Most Holy Father, who is full of love and grace, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for giving us life on this day that's more precious than the entire world and for having us live within your love. Please fill up your children who came out to Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant, with your grace and love. We thank you once again for sending us Jesus' messenger on this earth, the chairman of Shincheonji, according to the prophecies written in Revelation. It is from the promised shepherd that the 12 tribe leaders learned and perceived the fulfillment of Revelation and are preaching the word of the fulfillment of Revelation to the whole world. Please let your Holy Spirit guide us at this time so we can fully glorify you through this seminar and take control over the lips of the instructor who will be testifying to your word so that it will be a time filled with love and grace that come only from you. I sincerely pray that it will be a precious seminar where everyone around the world can glorify you as Revelation's prophecy and fulfillment are clearly testified. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who is full of love. Amen. Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant Continuing on from our last seminar, we'll be testifying to the content of the book of Revelation, chapter 14. We, Shincheonji, 12 tribes, clearly testify according to the words of God in the Bible as we've learned God's word and Jesus' testimony from the promised shepherd, the chairman of Shincheonji. Through the content of Revelation chapter 14 today, I hope everyone can perceive the reality of Mount Zion and the 144,000 who are harvested and sealed, along with the true meaning of the new song, and give all glory to God. We'll welcome up Instructor Yi Chung Woo from Peter Tribe, who will be testifying to God's Word for us today. To the religious believers all over the world who hope for eternal life in the Kingdom of Heaven and to the many Christian pastors in the family of faith, it is so good to meet you. My name is Lee jong Woo, who was appointed under the name of Peter. In continuation from the last time, 
Today, we will go over Revelation chapter 14. The main reference for today will be the 144,000 first fruits of Mount Zion. Who are the first fruits, the 144,000, at Mount Zion? Before we look at this, it is written that the 144,000 have God and Jesus' name written on their foreheads. It is because they are sealed with God and Jesus' name that they are sealed on their foreheads, right? Then, when and where did they get sealed? In order to understand this, we will look at the chapters that contrast with each other in Revelation. In Revelation, we can see there are three places where the chapters contrast each other. Revelation chapter 6 and 7, chapter 13 and 14, and chapter 18 and 19. In chapter 6 and 7, we can see in Revelation chapter 6, one era comes to an end because the chosen people received judgment. And in Revelation chapter 7, God's new kingdom is recreated again. At that time, with God's seal, there will be a sealed 144,000. Also, when we look at the relationship between Revelation chapter 13 and 14, we learned chapter 13 last time through the Bartholomew tribe leader well, right? The main point was that the chosen people received destruction from the destroyers. The reason was because they received Satan's false teachings. They received Satan's mark, acknowledging it and became his possession. That's why the chosen people became those who betrayed and received destruction. It's a chapter where they received Satan's mark. And in Revelation chapter 14, we can see through God, Jesus, and the promised shepherd, it's a chapter with the seal of God. That's why God and Jesus' name is recorded on their foreheads. How many received this seal at that time? It's explained as 144,000. Isn't that so? Next is chapter 18 and 19. Now since they accepted Satan's words, wouldn't Satan be one with them? Revelation chapter 18 is a chapter where they marry Satan. Those who received and accepted God's word become one at the wedding banquet of the Lamb. Like this, we can see chapters that contrast each other. Today, we will learn Revelation chapter 14. In Revelation chapter 14, we can see what conclusion appears as a result of receiving Satan's mark and God's seal. Earlier I asked, who are the 144,000 at Mount Zion? When and where did they get sealed? We can see in Revelation chapter 6 that one era came to an end. And when the new kingdom is created, there are the 144,000 that are sealed with God's word. They are those who appear as those who are sealed in Revelation chapter 14 as 144,000. When does Revelation chapter 14 fulfill? It is after the events of Revelation chapter 13. It will be at the time of harvest. The events in Revelation chapter 13 is after the chosen people receive destruction due to betrayal. The location of events is at Mount Zion before God's throne. We will look at the flow of Revelation chapter 14. Verses 1 to 5 is about the sealed 144,000 on Mount Zion. Verses 6 to 8 is about the eternal gospel, the new song. Inside verse 9 to 12, we can see the judgment those who receive the mark of the beast receive. Verse 13 to 16 is about the ripened crops being harvested. And verse 17 to 20 is referencing the weeds who weren't harvested, figurative as grapes, showing how they are judged. We will learn about Revelation chapter 14 today. The most important is regarding the faith that leads to the kingdom of heaven. The sealed 144,000 and knowing who they are. This is very important. 
and so it would be nice if you can perceive the main points well. In order to know who the sealed 144,000 at Mount Zion are, we will read verses 1 to 5. Revelation chapter 14, verse 1 to 5. Then I looked, and there before me was the Lamb, standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a sound from heaven like the roar of rushing waters, like a loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard was like that of harpists playing their harps. And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. These are those who did not defile themselves with women, for they kept themselves pure. They followed the Lamb wherever He goes. They were purchased from among men and offered as first fruits to God and the Lamb. No lie was found in their mouth. They are blameless. Amen. Yes, you read well. It starts off, Then I looked and can see that Revelation chapter 14 is a continuation to Revelation chapter 13. When it says, I looked, it is stating that this I is one person who sees and hears these events of Revelation's fulfillment when it fulfills. 2,000 years ago, Apostle John saw the overall events of Revelation in a vision. Please remember that today, at the time of Revelation's fulfillment, we can see there is the promised shepherd, New John, that one person who saw the reality of all these things at the location where these events fulfilled. Now we will look at the main reference, where it says that the Lamb standing on Mount Zion and with him were the 144,000. The reason why these words are important is because our hope is to meet Jesus at the second coming. Isn't that so? When Jesus returns, where will He return to? He will come to Mount Zion. Then, the 144,000 are those who meet Jesus when He returns at the second coming, right? Then in order to understand the 144,000, we need to first understand Mount Zion, the location where Jesus and the 144,000 meet, and then come to understand the 144,000. First, we can see there is a physical Mount Zion. It is in Jerusalem in the land of Israel. It is a mountain that has an elevation of about 800 meters. It is a place where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob lived. The king of Israel, King David, built his palace there, and from that time, Mount Zion became the religious center of Israel. So, Mount Zion can also symbolize Jerusalem and the chosen people. Then, when Jesus returns, will He return to physical Israel? If that is so, then the 144,000 need to ride an airplane to get to Mount Zion. However, when Revelation fulfills, it's not the physical Mount Zion, but what is figuratively representing, which is spiritual Mount Zion, Please remember this. Then in order to understand spiritual Mount Zion, first we will look at the word Zion. Zion is symbolizing chosen people. It refers to the shepherd and chosen people God chose. In Isaiah chapter 60 verse 14, it says, You will be called the city of the Lord, Zion, of the Holy One of Israel. In Zechariah chapter 2, verse 7, it says, Come, O Zion, escape you who live in the daughter of Babylon. Then, Zion is being referenced to a person. Zion has a meaning for chosen people. Then what meaning does mountain have? A physical mountain is made up of dirt, trees, animals that symbolize people, and where these people are gathered, which is a church or an organization. For example, there is a phrase where it says that where big crowds gather, it makes up a mountain, and that as people gathered, it formed mountains and seas. In Revelation, there are three mountains. The mountain of betrayal, the mountain of destruction, and the mountain of salvation. 
It's not a literal mountain, but just as we see in Revelation chapter 11, verse 8, it says it is figurative. It is a figurative mountain. In Revelation chapter 8, verse 8, we can see a huge mountain all ablaze is thrown into the sea. This tabernacle was judged by Jesus and is thrown out to the world. It is the mountain of betrayal. In Revelation chapter 17, verse 9 to 10, we see there is the destroyers, the beasts with seven heads and ten horns, and there are the seven mountains and seven kings. This is referring to the mountain of destruction. Lastly, the remaining mountain in Revelation chapter 14, verse 1, is a mountain where Jesus the Lamb is standing, and this is a mountain of salvation. That's why, when we see Mount Zion, it's the place where the chosen people have gathered, and it is a church and organization that have been gathered centered around Jesus. The reality of this is the 12 tribes of new spiritual Israel. Why is it the 12 tribes? The clue is 144,000. The 144,000 in Revelation chapter 7 is recorded as the sealed 12 tribes. That's why this Mount Zion refers to the 12 tribes. Then what kind of people are the sealed 144,000? They are the kingdom of priests of new spiritual Israel. One era had come to an end, and we can see they are the sealed kingdom of priests in God's new kingdom. How do they come to Mount Zion to the twelve tribes? In verse 4, it says they are the first fruits. That's why they were harvested and sealed and are the first fruits. They aren't the weeds that weren't harvested but were the wheat-like believers that were harvested. How were they harvested can be understood when Revelation chapter 14, verses 14 to 16 is explained in detail later. Then, to the sealed 144,000, it's recorded that the name of God and Jesus are recorded on their foreheads, right? Then is it that God and Jesus' name are literally stamped on their foreheads? No, right? When it says the name of God in Jesus, we can see that the name is one way to show indication of that person. God in Jesus is a word in the beginning, right? Then, the words where the name of God in Jesus are on their foreheads means that the word of God in Jesus are recorded in their hearts and minds and are sealed with being acknowledged as God's people. In Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10, it says, When the new covenant is sealed in the hearts and minds, then God will be their God and they will be God's people. That's why they are those who are acknowledged as God's people. They are the sealed 144,000 in Revelation chapter 7. On the other hand, we can see in Revelation chapter 13 that there are those who receive the mark of Satan. In Revelation chapter 17, verse 5, we can see there is a prostitute, a false shepherd. On her forehead, it says, it's mystery, Babylon the Great. We can see in Revelation chapter 18, Babylon is the home of demons. It's referring to the people who have Satan's false teachings and lies in their hearts and minds. Then everyone, what kind of person can enter the kingdom of heaven? Wouldn't it be the people who have God and Jesus' word recorded in their hearts and mind? Then, should you accept and listen to everything that is being testified? No, you have to discern whether they are words of God or Satan. That's why one must have God and Jesus' word sealed and recorded in the hearts and minds to be able to enter the kingdom of heaven, becoming the people of heaven. We will take a look at verse 2. We can see a sound is heard. It sounds like the roar of rushing waters and like a loud peal of thunder, and it also a beautiful sound like that of harpists playing their harps. What heaven is this? This heaven is God's kingdom that has come down upon Mount Zion. 
In Revelation chapter 4, it was promised that the spiritual realm of heaven would come down. In Revelation chapter 21, we can see that holy city, New Jerusalem, come down upon new heaven and new earth. Just like this, we can see this place is also in Revelation chapter 7, where the sealed 12 tribes are at. That place is where God's tabernacle will be at, and that place is also Mount Zion. This is where God's throne and tabernacle are one with. That's why it's speaking of that heaven. The sound from heaven is a sound that comes from where God is at, and we can understand it as the voice of God. Then, this place where God's throne is one with, we can see the 144,000 sing a new song before the throne, the four living creatures, and the elders. No one could learn or sing the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. Then what is this new song? We have to first understand what song means. A song was sung speaking of the future events. That's why we can understand it as a gospel of prophecy, and we can then understand the new song, which was never heard before, is a gospel of the fulfillment of the prophecies, testifying to the fulfillment and reality. Then what kind of word is a new song that is sung at the fulfillment of Revelation? It is a gospel of the fulfillment of the prophecies of Revelation. If song is a word, then the new song is a new word. This new song, as seen in Revelation chapter 5, verse 9, is sung by the four living creatures and the elders, and on earth, the sealed 144,000 sing the new song. Then the new song they sing in verse 6 is explained as the eternal gospel. Therefore, this new song that only the 144,000 can sing is the fulfillment of revelation. Then, what is the reason to which why only the 144,000 can learn the new song? The reason to this is because God's throne has come upon Mount Zion, and furthermore, where God's throne is at, God's promised shepherd is there. Right? It's because there is a witness, the promised shepherd who saw all the fulfillment. That's why in Revelation chapter 3, verse 12, it says, To him overcomes, God, Jesus, and the spiritual realm of heaven will be one, and the place where God's throne comes down upon, it says that him overcomes will sit with Jesus on his throne. Therefore, where him overcomes is at is where God and Jesus' throne is at. Him overcomes, as seen in Revelation chapter 1 verse 2, is a shepherd who testifies to everything he saw and heard from God and Jesus. He receives the open scroll in Revelation chapter 10 and is a witness who saw and heard the overall events of Revelation as written in Revelation chapter 22 verse 8. Therefore, because 144,000 learn the word through this promised shepherd, the witness, there are only those who can sing the new song. Then how important is a new song? This new song appearing is proof of confirming the 144,000 and Mount Zion. What kind of place is Mount Zion? God, Jesus, and the spiritual realm of heaven is all one with it, and the promised shepherd is there too. Then what kind of place is this? Isn't it the kingdom of heaven that we have been hoping for? Then can anyone just become the kingdom of heaven? Can anyone just gather to become Mount Zion, the 144,000 and the kingdom of heaven? No. If it's the 144,000, they must be able to sing the new song. And if it's Mount Zion, the new song must come out from there. That's why this new song is proof of confirming Mount Zion and the 144,000. If the word of Revelation is not testified, it is not Mount Zion, nor is it the 144,000. Does that make sense? Then what kind of people are the 144,000? We will take a closer look at this. 
We have to know what kind of people the 144,000 are so that we can put an effort to become like it, right? They did not defile themselves with women, but kept themselves pure. When it speaks of women here, it's not a physical woman, but a spiritual woman, a shepherd. 2,000 years ago, Apostle Paul was a shepherd that testified the word of God, but was also figuratively expressed as a woman, stating having pains of childbirth, feeding milk, not solid food, and did not marry or have children, but calls Timothy son. Because the word is a seed, the shepherd who received the seed is in the position figuratively for a woman who rears congregation members that are like children. Then that kind of shepherd is figurative for a woman. Then in Revelation, what kind of women are defiled? This is the prostitute, the false shepherd. It isn't with God's word, the seed, but with Satan's false teachings, weeds, that are received and gives birth to children of the devil. So, it's a false shepherd, so it's explained as a prostitute, and in Revelation chapter 2, verse 20, it's speaking of Jezebel, who feeds food sacrificed to idols to God's servants. In Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 to 5, we see the mother of prostitutes, and of the abominations of the earth, Babylon, who commits adultery with the kings of the earth. They have entered heaven's tabernacle in Revelation chapter 13 and marked with Satan's mark and made them worship idols. However, the 144,000 did not become one with them, but kept themselves pure, meaning they didn't commit adultery with evil spirits, but kept their faith. They didn't listen to the words of the false shepherd. Whose words did they listen to? They were the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He leads, and they are those who only listen and obey to Jesus' words. Also, it says they were purchased among men and offered as first fruits. They were purchased meaning they were those who were atoned and saved by Jesus' blood. The reason why it says that they are first fruits is because 2,000 years ago, Jesus spread the seed of the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. And for the past 2,000 years, the seed grew. And for the first time in spiritual farming, they are the fruits, congregation members to appear that now they're called the first fruits. That's why the 144,000 are those who receive salvation as their sins were washed by Jesus' blood, and as the kingdom and priests, there are those who are purchased by Jesus' blood and those who are toned by His blood. They are reborn of God's seed, harvested as the first fruits. They belong to God and to the Lamb, and no lie was found in their mouths, they are blameless we can see that God accepted them as a first fruits. At the time of Moses, we can see it says in the word that the first fruits were to be offered to God and long time ago physical fruits were offered. But when the promised word fulfills, in order for us to become a first fruit, there is a passage that says we were born through the word of truth. It's referring to people. The sealed 144,000 are the first fruits that belong to God and the Lamb who become His possession. And there is no lie in their mouths and are blameless, meaning they only have the word of truth and are those who keep it. We can see in Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 to 19, if you add to Revelation, you can't go to the kingdom of heaven. And it also says you will receive curses. The sealed 144,000 did not add or subtract to Revelation, but are those who went to the kingdom of heaven, right? Then, they are those who possess the word of truth. The sealed 144,000, 
And what kind of people are they? They are those who are sealed with a new song. They are at Mount Zion and are the first fruits. If I didn't know what these words meant, then we are those who weren't able to hear the testimony of the new song. Everyone, the word of revelation was sealed in parables because the promised word doesn't fulfill until the proper time. No one knew. So, it's possible to add or subtract during that time. However, when the promised word fulfills, because a reality appears, you can no longer lie. That's why, if the word of revelation has appeared, then if you add or subtract to it, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. But if you don't add or subtract, but hear and accept that testimony, then everyone can belong to God and be the believers who enter the kingdom of heaven. To the dear pastors, please first receive this testimony of revelation and testify truth to the congregation members you love, then wouldn't it be great to know how to get to the kingdom of heaven? Please listen well and perceive so that you can be the pastors who can guide many congregation members to the kingdom of heaven. Next, in order to take a look at the eternal gospel, we will read verse 6 to 8. Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 to 8. Then I saw another angel flying in midair. Then he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give Him glory, because the hour of His judgment has come. Worship Him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. A second angel followed and said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, which made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. Amen. Yes, you read well. There's another angel that appears that has the eternal gospel to proclaim to every nation, tribe, language, and people. Then what is the eternal gospel? The word gospel testifies to the fulfillment of the promised prophecies. At the time of Revelation, the eternal gospel is a word that testifies to Revelation's fulfillment. The fulfillment of the prophecies of Revelation. That prophecy, the meaning, and the reality is testified. Who is it testified to? We can see in Joel chapter 1, verse 3 to 4, to tell to your children and let your children tell to their children and to the next generation. Then isn't that the eternal gospel? That's why the gospel of the Old Testament that was fulfilled in the first coming was testified for 2,000 years. Now in the New Testament, the New Covenant, the word of Revelation is fulfilled, there's nothing else that needs to be fulfilled, right? then when Revelation fulfills, this will become the eternal gospel. The eternal gospel in Revelation chapter 14, verse 3, is explained as a new song. And who testifies to the new song? It is the promised shepherd who saw these events of Revelation and the sealed 144,000 who learned from the promised shepherd at Mount Zion. They are those who can only sing the new song. Then where will the fulfillment of Revelation be testified to? To every nation, tribe, language, and people, which refers to all churches. That's why the promised shepherd, who saw and heard all the events of Revelation, testifies all things to the churches. This is like Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, where it says the gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the whole world. All the things that have been fulfilled will be testified to all nations. This angel also says to fear God and the hour of His judgment has come. It says to worship God. Who are the recipients to receive judgment and where is the location to worship God? 
The recipients to receive judgment after the 42 months is Babylon, the destroyers who destroy the tabernacle of God's chosen people in Revelation chapter 18. Also, the location to worship God is where all nations will come to worship God, which is the temple, the tabernacle of the testimony. We will take a look at this next time in detail when we learn Revelation chapter 15. There's also another angel that appears, and that angel says that Babylon will fall. We can see the reality of Babylon in Revelation chapter 17, verse 5 to 7, as the organization of the prostitute and the beast she rides that has seven heads and ten horns. The reality is the prostitute and that organization. What did they do? They fed all nations, all churches, the maddening wine of adultery. We can see adultery is having a relationship with Satan and being deceived by Satan's false teachings. The maddening wine of adultery is not God's word, but false teachings, lies of the devil that they received and testify to those words. This maddening wine of adultery is not God's word, but false teachings, false doctrines, commentaries, and it is the wild vines, the venom of serpents, deadly poison of cobras, and if you eat of this, you will die. It is a reality of the fruit of good and evil. That's why this maddening wine of adultery was fed to all nations by Babylon. But Babylon crumbles, meaning it crumbles because they receive judgment. Why do they receive judgment? It's because of the sin of destroying heaven's tabernacle and all nations with the maddening wine of adultery that God judges them. Their judgment can be understood through Revelation chapter 17 and 18. So we will learn in detail when we go over those chapters. What is the judgment that those who receive the mark of the beast receive? We can see this in verses 9 to 11. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 to 11. A third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on the forehead or on the hand, he too will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. He will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment rises forever and ever. There is no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and his image, or for anyone who receives the mark of his name. Amen. This is what the third angel says. It is about the judgment that those who receive the mark of the beast receive. The beast, his image, and those who were marked appear. The beast here is referring to the destroyers that devoured God's tabernacle. His image, the idols, are the false shepherds that the destroyers raised. Then who are those who worship the beast and received the mark? They are the congregation members of the tabernacle of heaven that betrayed in Revelation chapter 13. They didn't accept God's word, nor did they worship God. But because they worshiped Satan and his false shepherds, we can see this result is miserable. It says they will drink of the wine of God's fury, which is the words of judgment filled with wrath. They receive judgment, and the result is that they will be tormented with burning sulfur. They will suffer forever and ever. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, it's recorded as entering the second death. This is the flames of hell. Then in Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 to 6, we can see there are those who did not worship the beast or his image and did not receive his mark. They become one with the souls of the martyrs and enter the first resurrection. They become the kingdom and priests of Christ and will reign for a thousand years. The second death has no power over them. 
In Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 to 5, there are those who have God's name on their foreheads, and they will reign with Christ forever and ever. We can't be those who receive the mark of the beast or worship the devil, but we must be those who worship God and accept God's word being the true believers of God, right? We also need to be believers who endure and keep our faith. When we think about endurance, it is fighting and overcoming the beast until the time of salvation. And those who keep God's commands and faith in Jesus are those who flee to the mountains when the abomination that causes desolation is standing in the holy place. Those who are recorded in the book of life, dressed in white, who walk with Jesus and are acknowledged as stated in Revelation chapter 3, verse 4 to 5. They are those who worship in the temple of God and the altar in Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. And as written in Revelation chapter 17, verse 14, are those who are called chosen and faithful followers who overcame. And they are those who overcame in Revelation chapter 15, verse 2, that were victorious over the beast and his image and the number of his name. Also, they are those who are reborn through the word of truth being harvested as the 144,000 first fruits who kept their faith. We must be those who endure and remain faithful as true believers. Then, how does the harvest of the ripe crops take place? To understand this, we will take a look at verse 13 to 16. Revelation chapter 14, verse 13 to 16. Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. I looked, and there before me was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man, with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, Take your sickle and reap, because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. Amen. You read very well. I will now explain verse 13. It says, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. It says they will rest from their labor. It says from now on, which means from this starting point from now on. Then starting when? It is after the 42 months of destruction. This period of destruction, where the chosen people betrayed and received destruction, we can see there are those who die in the Lord, and they will receive blessings. Death in itself is a curse. How can it be a blessing? Then what dies? This is sin. It means sin dies and righteousness lives. What is this talking about? In Revelation chapter 13, verse 15, it says all who refuse to worship the image would be killed, right? At this time, if you fear the beast and worship the image of the beast, then righteousness dies and sin lives. However, if you endure and keep your faith, and as a result do not worship the beast, then sin will die and righteousness will live. Who is an example of this? Apostle Paul from 2,000 years ago. Apostle Paul killed the thoughts of flesh and sin and said he dies to himself daily and lived his life for the purpose of fulfilling God's will. That person is like the one who dies in the Lord. The era right now is the era where God will reign. Then for this, God's new kingdom and new people have to be created, right? For this, the word of Revelation has to fulfill. 
That's why today, at the time of Revelation's fulfillment, where God's kingdom is being created, we have to pray for God's kingdom and righteousness and live for God's will. Then that person becomes one who dies in the Lord and will receive blessings. What kind of blessings? The blessing of eternal life. We can see in John chapter 11, verse 25 to 26, that he who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The one who dies has eternal life. These words are fulfilling today. They create the new kingdom and new people that God will reign over and will enter Sabbath rest with God. That's why we have to become people who die in the Lord. That means we need to do the work of God, right? What is God's work? It is harvest. When we take a look at verse 14 to 16, we see a sickle used to harvest and ripe crops. There was one like a son of man seated on the cloud with a sharp sickle. This is an angel like the image of Jesus. Seated on the cloud means the cloud is being governed over and we know that clouds symbolize spirits and can understand this is the angel leading many angels. There is another angel that comes out of the temple commanding to take a sickle and reap. We can understand this as an angel who has a duty to make known the time to harvest. Then, now there will be the work of harvest. How does harvest begin and how does it fulfill? We will take a look at the start and end to this. This is the process of being harvested. About 2,600 years ago, physical Israel made a covenant with God. But through King Solomon, the king of Israel, and the worshiping of Gentile gods, through that event, we saw in Hosea chapter 6, verse 7, that like Adam, they broke the covenant. Then God brought an end to physical Israel and said he would create a new thing to be done and stated that there will be two types of seeds, the offspring of man and animal, planted in the house of Israel and Judah in one field. These words were fulfilled 2,600 years later at Jesus' first coming. 2,000 years ago, Jesus, as a son of man, planted the good seed in his field. At that time, the enemy, the devil, planted more weeds, the offspring of animal in that field. At this time, when it was asked if the weeds should be pulled out, it was told to wait until the time of harvest. When it's a time of harvest, the weeds will be tied into bundles and burned, and the wheat will be gathered and brought to the barn. Why could the weeds not be pulled out? It's because when the good seed and weeds are planted, if you look at the physical logic, we can see here there is wheat and weed. Which one is weed? You can't discern when it's young, right? If you look, the one in the middle is a weed. When they are young, you can't discern. Furthermore, when the weeds are pulled out, the root is mixed in with the wheat. So then the wheat can also come out as well. That's why the farmer pulls out the weeds at the time of harvest. The reason is because at the time of harvest, the wheat and weeds can clearly be differentiated. Can you see it? The image of wheat and weed. Using this logic, we can understand that both seeds grow. Then how do they grow? It separates as a good seed that are the sons of the kingdom, and the weeds are the sons of the evil one. Where is the field the seed is planted? It's the world of Jesus, and it's where the seed the word of Jesus is at, which is Jesus' church, the world of churches. That's why, when we look at this through the Bible, the church doesn't only have those who will go to the kingdom of heaven, but there are sons of the kingdom 
and sons of the evil one who will receive judgment. That time is a time of harvest, which is the end of age. At the time of harvest, the harvesting angels come and take the wheat to the barn. How are the sons of the kingdom taken to the barn? We have to understand this. The sons of the evil one are not harvested and receive fire judgment. This is the promise of the Bible. Then, how does harvest take place? The angel is a spirit. Then do you think the angel who is in spirit will use a physical sickle to harvest? No, right? This sharp sickle is symbolizing a sharp sickle, but what is it? It's God's Word. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, it says God's Word is a sword. And in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 4, at the time of harvest, it says the swords and spears will be made into plowshares and pruning hooks. This sharp sickle is God's Word and the person who has the Word. That's why, just like how the seed was planted 2,000 years ago through a person, a flesh, when the harvest takes place, it will be through a person as well. The sickle that the angel has is a word of God and the person with the word. That's why the word will be testified. And the ripe crops are the congregation members who were born through the seed of the word those who accepted the word of testimony. Then the word is testified and they accept it and are harvested. Then how does harvest take place? It is to follow the word of testimony. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 40 to 41, we can see one will be taken and the other will be left on the field. Also, two women are grinding with a handmill, and women refer to shepherds. One will be taken, and one will be left. Then, at the time of harvest, whether a shepherd or a congregation member, both need to be harvested to go to the kingdom of heaven. If they aren't harvested, then they are a weed and will receive judgment. Then to be harvested means to follow the word of testimony. If inside the word of testimony it tells you where the barn to the kingdom of heaven is, then one can go there. This is where the fruits will be at. The place where the first fruits are is Mount Zion. God's throne is there too, right? We can also see where God's throne is at, the temple, the tabernacle, the testimony in Revelation chapter 15. That's why at Mount Zion, there are the 12 tribes, the 144,000. And that reality is the temple, the tabernacle, the testimony. That's why those who follow the word of truth are harvested to the temple, the tabernacle, the testimony. And that is evidence that they are wheat, the people of the kingdom of heaven. Then, Right now is a time of harvest and revelation's fulfillment. There has to be a reality of sealing through the new song and the work of harvest. Isn't that so? What kind of place is that? It is Shincheonji Church of Jesus, the Temple, the Tabernacle, the Testimony, Zion Christian Mission Center. This place is the only educational institution in the world based on the Bible. This is a place where the new song, the revealed word, comes out from. Then through the course of the revealed theology, after the completion of elementary, intermediate, and advanced, they are harvested to Mount Zion. When listening to the word at Zion Christian Mission Center, how much do you have to pay? The whole course is free. Just like Jesus' words, it says to give the free gift of the water of life to whoever is thirsty. Those words are being put into action. Then, 
We will see through a Zion Christian Mission Center publicity video to see if many people are hearing these words of truth and are being harvested. In 2019, the graduation of 103,764 people was broadcast live to the whole world. This was the place where the graduates of Shincheonji Church of Jesus, the Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony, Zion Christian Mission Center, from 112 countries completed their Bible education and commemorated it. A place that produced over 100,000 graduates in just one year. What kind of place is Zion Christian Mission Center where people from all over the world come to to learn the Bible? Zion Christian Mission Center is the only systematic educational institution in the world based on the Bible. Following the teaching of Jesus, who said to give freely to those who are thirsty, all education provided by Zion Christian Mission Center is free of charge throughout the country. The curriculum covers history, moral instructions, prophecies, and fulfillment throughout the Bible. It is divided into elementary, intermediate, and advanced courses. The elementary course is a process of learning through the Bible the true meanings of the parables and why Jesus spoke the secrets of the Kingdom of Heaven in parables. The next course is intermediate, where through the Old and New Testament, you can learn the important events through history and how the prophecies fulfill by learning chapter by chapter. In the advanced course, you will learn the prophecies of Revelation and their fulfillment written across the entire book of Revelation through the five W's and one H. Even in this contact-free era due to the coronavirus, the online classes at Zion Christian Mission Center are filled with students who come searching for the Word. Lessons are taught logically according to the Bible. You'll find the lessons clear and refreshing, answering all of your questions. Lessons are fun without any moment of boredom. Join our class without worrying about the coronavirus. You can learn the Bible easily and joyfully. The door to Zion Christian Mission Center is open wide to everyone. The video you just watched is evidence to show that the harvest is taking place according to the promise in the Bible at the time of harvest, at the time of Revelation's fulfillment. That's why it's not too late. You can register to Zion Christian Mission Center and hear the word of truth, the revealed word, and all be those who are harvested to the barn to the kingdom of heaven as the people of heaven. Then, you can't be ones who block this harvest, right? Who blocks? Those who are not harvested block. Where are they? They're on the field, the world, Jesus' church. It says the weeds will be bundled. Then who will bundle them? Their shepherd will bundle them. 2,000 years ago, the Pharisees and teachers of the law were shepherds. They were shepherds who should have led to Jesus to the kingdom of heaven. But they shut the kingdom of heaven in men's faces, and they didn't enter and blocked others. How? They said if they go to Jesus, they will fall into a cult and that they would die. Today is the same. They say being harvested is falling into a cult, going to hell, and there are shepherds who say this. They bundle them with the words of the shepherds. Those who acknowledge those shepherds are those who are bundled. They are the members of that church, and the fact they remain on the field and aren't harvested proves they are weeds. The place they are bundled is their church. What is the result? As the word states, they will receive judgment and will go into hell. That's why, at the time of harvest, it's not listening to their shepherd, but must listen to the harvesting angels. 
Please remember this. Furthermore, 2,000 years ago, there is a fulfillment in reality to those who were not harvested that we confirmed with the word. The reason why these words were given in advance was so that these actions should never be done at the time of the second coming, harvest. Starting with the pastors today, please perceive the revealed word and testify it to many congregation members so that you can lead many to the kingdom of heaven so that they can be harvested, becoming the best pastors being acknowledged before God. We will take a look at who the grapes that get judged are. To understand this, we will read verse 17 to 20. Revelation chapter 14, verse 17 to 20. Another angel came out of the temple in heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. Still another angel, who had charge of the fire, came from the altar and called in a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle. Take your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes from the earth's vine, because its grapes are ripe. The angel swung his sickle on the earth, gathered its grapes, and threw them into the great winepress of God's wrath. They were trampled in the winepress outside the city, and blood flowed out of the press, rising as high as the horses' bridles for a distance of 1,600 stadia. Amen. What we just read was regarding the judgment of the clusters of grapes. The grapes were gathered and were thrown into the wine press and were trampled on. There may be people who wonder why the grapes are judged suddenly during the harvest. But if you look at Matthew chapter 13, verses 40 to 42, it says, Just as the weeds are pulled and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. Isn't this time the end of the age, the time of harvest? Harvest took place until verse 16, and then the weeds are left. Those weeds being judged are referenced here as grapes. In verse 17 to 20, we can understand it as content of the weeds being judged. It's the same content. There is an angel with a sharp sickle, and this angel that came from the altar makes known the time of harvest. That's why it's told to gather the clusters of grapes from the earth, right? This is not physical clusters of grapes from the earth, but this is figurative for spiritual cluster of grapes speaking of the chosen people. They are the congregation members of the tabernacle of heaven that betrayed and were thrown out to the den of the destroyers in Revelation chapter 13. The reason why it's referenced as cluster of grapes is that in Isaiah chapter 5 verse 1 to 7, a vineyard of choicest vines were planted, but only yielded bad crop. How did it yield this? In Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 21, it says, A choice vine was planted, but they were attached to the branch of the Gentile vine. That's why in Deuteronomy chapter 32, we see there are wild grapes, clusters with bitterness. That's why these chosen people who betrayed are the wild grapes, clusters with bitterness that will receive judgment. They are placed in the great winepress of God's wrath and are trampled in the winepress outside the city. The great winepress is a tool used for judgment, right? What is used to judge? In John chapter 12, verse 48, it says, The very words Jesus spoke will be used to judge on the last day. God's word will be used to judge them. Where? Outside the city. This is a Gentile denomination. The chosen people who betrayed were thrown out and went inside the destroyers and died one-third at a time. They will receive judgment at that place. Those who were thrown out in Revelation chapter 6 receive judgment in Revelation chapter 16, and furthermore, they are those who are outside the city. They were judged, but blood comes out. That blood flowed out as high as a horse's bridles. Everyone, how can the blood reach the bridle of a horse when people are being judged? It's not physical blood, right? Even if every person in the entire world died, their blood wouldn't fill up the height of a horse's bridle. This blood is a word. 
But what kind of word? It is the news regarding the judgment of the congregation members of heaven's tabernacle that betrayed. Then what does it mean it reached the bridle of a horse? In the Bible, an ox and horse is a shepherd or a person of duty. So the fact that it reached as high as a horse's bridle is that it was spread through the mouths of the shepherds. What was? The news of the judgment. This tabernacle temple betrayed and were destroyed by the destroyers and as a result became a possession of the Gentiles. This tabernacle temple became a Gentile church, was judged and came to a complete end. and this was spread through the mouths of the shepherds. Then when it says it was spread for a distance of 1,600 stadia, it means it was made known throughout the country. 1,600 stadia is about 350 kilometers. It means it was spread throughout the country. The reason for this was that this tabernacle temple had 80 branch churches. The 80 branch churches were changed to Gentile names and received judgment. Does everyone understand? Today we looked at Revelation chapter 14. We will take a look at the conclusion. At the time of Revelation's fulfillment, there are those who go to the kingdom of heaven. They are born of God's seed, harvested from east to west, are sealed and belong to the 12 tribes. However, who are those that go to hell? They are thrown outside the city due to the sin of betrayal and are the subjects of the kingdom and destroyers. They are weeds that are not harvested. To the family of faith, aren't we carrying out a life of faith to go to the kingdom of heaven? That kingdom of heaven is not just by going to church. It's not only by believing in Jesus. But going to the kingdom of heaven at the time of harvest is being harvested and entering the barn. That reality, as the title states, is the 144,000 first fruits of Mount Zion. However, it's not only the 144,000 that enter the barn of the kingdom of heaven. After the 144,000 are sealed, there will be a great tribulation. And from there, the great multitude that no one could count dressed in white, who are washed by Jesus' blood, who are created, come before God's throne. Right now is a time of this great tribulation and the time where the great multitude are being created. To all of you who are listening to the revealed word, to the family of faith, we shouldn't be divided by denominations, but be the family of God that are born of God's one seed and all be harvested and belong to the barn of the kingdom of heaven, the twelve tribes. We are one inside of God and Jesus. We are one. We will end here for today. Let's pray. Thankful and grateful Father God, By your grace, you have opened this seminar, and we thank you for allowing many people to gather. Please govern all the hearts that participated. Today we looked at Revelation chapter 14. We saw the result of those who received Satan's mark and the seal of God And at this time, we pray that everyone who received these words would pull out all the weeds and Satan's lies from their hearts and plant the word of truth, being reborn, harvested, and sealed. We pray that you will govern our hearts so we can continue this precious meeting next time. And we sincerely and earnestly pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening until the end. It tells us where all nations will go and worship. Where is the place where all nations would go to worship God? The temple of the tabernacle of the testimony.
The Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony is where those who are victorious in Revelation 12 testify to what they saw and heard at the location of the events. So if you're curious about Revelation, where should you go? The Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony. Testimony and Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant. We've heard the content of Revelation 14 together today. All the pastors who are listening to these words from all over the world, believers of God, we read the same Bible under the same God. Though we may be from different places and speak different languages, our heart of loving God's Word, our heart of loving God's Word is the same, and there's only one truth of God. We, the 12 tribes of Shinshanji, desire to serve God and carry out our life of faith along with all the people of the world by sharing the truth in love and peace. Many media reports have been pouring out to the whole world upon hearing this revealed word, and pastors from across the globe are wanting to sign MOU with us. Shinchanji is open to anyone who loves God's word. Any pastor who wants to sign a MOU with a sincere heart can contact us via email or phone anytime. Lastly, I'd like to thank the pastors and believers from around the world who took part in our 12th seminar of Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant. Please join us next time to continue hearing the testimony of the revealed word until it is completed. We'll finish the seminar here today and offer up the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All the family members of God, I truly thank you.